This morning, New York City awaits a grand jury vote in a case with echoes of Ferguson, Missouri. The decision on whether to charge a white police officer could come as early as today. The city medical examiner ruled an improper chokehold was a factor in the death of a black suspect, Eric Garner. The case sparked protest over police use of force. New York City Police Commissioner Bill Bratton is with us for an interview we'll see only on CBS this morning. He also led police departments in Boston and Los Angeles. Commissioner, welcome. Good morning. Uh, tell me how you're preparing for this grand jury decision and, and whether you're informed by the events in Ferguson. Uh, we've been preparing in multiple ways for months now. We've been conducting a series of community meetings throughout the city with a lot concentrated naturally in Staten Island. I was over there as recently as Monday. And we've also been tactically preparing in terms of bringing in resources to deal with any potential eventuality. Uh, you uh, hope for the best and plan for the worst. Mm -hmm. People in New York, as you know, were very angry about the Eric Gardner case. I know you said you're prepared, but do you, do you think that what happened in Ferguson could happen here? We don't anticipate that at we all. Don't. We had an earlier major uh, demonstration during the course of the summer, almost immediately after the event. Uh, four to 5,000 demonstrators, peaceful march. We've had no significant uh, events in Staten Island since the event itself. No, that uh, it's a community over there that's really working very hard to ensure that there are no problems uh, when the decision finally comes down. Let's talk about the distrust between communities and police departments. That's what we saw in Ferguson. There is a lot of anger and distrust. And after the Michael Brown decision came down, there was a protest here in New York City. You were hit and splattered with, with blood on, on your face. How do you address something like that? I mean, how do you address what is that, that real anger and, and feeling by a community that, that the police treats them differently? Well, the irony what we're dealing with here in New York is we have the New York community, the people who live here. And then we have a lot of outside agitators who come in for these events. The individual who was involved in mine, for example, is from Utah, and originally from Bolivia. Who doesn't live here. With the blood. That's correct. Oh. So he's one of the outside agitators who's just seeking to take advantage of what's going on here. We spend a lot of time, I spend an awful lot of my time personally, interacting with the various communities in the city, trying to build that trust. Uh, it's quite clear that in many communities we don't have it for a variety of reasons. You so, sent you, NYPD detectives to Ferguson to see how to deal with this. What specifically did you learn? Uh, we had teams of detectives there from an intelligence unit to, one, take a look at who was there. There were quite a few of our uh, 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 agitators that were there in Ferguson. A number of those arrested were from New York. So to kind of keep an eye on them, but also see what new tactics might be employed by the agitators, the professional agitators, to uh, gather what we could and bring it back to our experience and try to prevent it. Having said all that you have this morning, what worries you the most? What worries me the most is not so much the organized events, but the disorganized, the spontaneous, somebody who uh, you've not prepared for that just all of a sudden starts acting up in a neighborhood and gets a few people going around them. Uh, the organizers of these demonstrations, their intent is to have orderly demonstrations. They don't want violence. They don't want vandalism. But it's the disorganized that uh, would be our concern, or the professional agitators, which we have no shortage of here in New York. How do you Who's prepare it? for that? Mm -hmm. We are. That uh, We track social media very aggressively. We've got 1,000 people in our counterterrorism intelligence units. We have watched very closely the demonstrations over the last couple of weeks for any new initiatives, any new way that they're trying to uh, get their point across. We adjust our tactics to their tactics very frequently and try to anticipate to the best of our ability what they're going to be. It was announced yesterday that the NYPD is going to start training with body cams. What effect do you think that will have on the officers? I'm very supportive of body cams, that uh, we, in fact, uh, are going to be conducting training over the next several days. We'll have a press conference later today around that and they'll be up and running the initial 50 by this weekend. So I'm very excited personally about that. I'm a great supporter of technology and policing. I think it will eliminate an awful lot of the he said, she said situations where we don't have video, and that will be a good thing. I'm curious, we all saw when you were splashed with the, with the red paint, the fake blood, Commissioner, and you made light of it at the time. But I'm curious, how, if at all, did it affect you? Are you angry? Are you scared? Are you worried? Does it make you rethink things? I was, I was bothered by it to the extent that uh, there you are in the middle of Times Square. Uh, the demonstrations have been going well, that uh, the traffic disruption, but again, no vandalism, no violence, no crime. And uh, then this character out of nowhere uh, comes out and uh, throws what we believe is some type of uh, artificial blood paint type substance. Mm -hmm. uh, splattered myself and eight or nine police officers and possibly some bystanders. 
totally unnecessary that uh, and uh, fortunately he will be very aggressively prosecuted. All right, Commissioner Bratton, also known as Ricky Kleeman's husband here. <laughs> Good to have you at the table. Or John Miller's friend. Or John Miller's friend. Now she's, she's sleeping in this morning. Lucky girl. Both a good thing. Thank you.